Welcome to this writing summary of Before the Flood. If you don't already know, I talk about the content in films and discuss the reasons why they're given the ratings they're given rather than you know, specifically review the film. Although on this one, I probably will share some thoughts about the movie at the end of the review. So if you're planning to watch this film, particularly with kids like I did, and I'm really glad I did, uh, let's talk about the content and what kind of things that you will see. Starting with the violence. Well, there isn't really any violence or violent images through the film. There's a couple of small things. There's a very brief uh, kind of, well, I, it's newsreel footage, I think, of people fighting over fresh drinking water. And you see someone kind of looks like they're being mobbed, um, you know, but, but that it's very, very brief and, and that's it. You see some film footage. There's some film footage shot from The Revenant, kind of behind the scenes footage. You see a battle scene being recorded. You'll see a mountain of skulls. Um, if you've seen the film, you'll already know which sequences I'm talking about. And um, you know, again, it's very brief and it's not lingered upon. You don't actually see anybody being hurt or injured. One thing that you do see is in the film, you see a picture of uh, serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. So your kids might ask you later who that man in the orange suit was. So <laughs> be prepared for that one. Um, but as I said, there's no blood or gore. The film does address the impact on uh, the beef industry on climate change. So slaughtering cattle isn't mentioned, but you certainly don't see anything like that. You, I mean, you see a cow in the film, but you don't see any industrial or kind of meat works or butchering or, or any animals being slaughtered or anything like that. There's just the mention of slaughtering cattle. So onto the sex and nudity. Again, there's no sex in the film, which is not surprising. And nudity. Well, the film, the framing device used by the film is actually a painting. So Leonardo DiCaprio often refers to the famous Garden of Earthly Delights by Hieronymus Bosch. It's a famous triptych. And in this particular painting, there's quite a few nude people in it. So let me just stress, even though the people aren't wearing any clothing, it's not, well, it's not graphic enough. And certainly the visions, visuals that you see of it aren't kind of too graphic to be offensive. You know, you're, you're it's very obvious that you're looking at a work of art and it can be appreciated as such. Likewise, there's one scene in this one shot of, in this triptych, there's one um, screen which shows a lot of, you know, the earth basically tearing itself apart and violence. And um, again, the way it's shot, it's not sort of promoting that violence. And it's certainly not really focusing on it to a point where it seems upsetting or too visual or too graphic. But, you know, just so you know, th those shots are there in the film. Um, so yeah, no, but no sex scenes, certainly nothing like that. Um, now on to alcohol and drugs. There's one scene where an interview is taking place and it appears that the two, the interviewer and the interview, interviewee are both drinking some spirits, but otherwise there is no other alcohol anywhere in the film and certainly no illegal drugs or any other drugs in the film. And um, bad language, well, there's no swearing in the film, so there's no F words or S words. Someone is called a badass at one point and there's a couple of you know words like crap and son of a bitch once or twice in the film, but uh, overall it's, it's very clean when it comes to language. This certainly isn't a film that I'd call profane really in any way. A bit of name calling once or twice and a few um, religious exclamations, I think. But, um, but that really is about it. But the main reason you'll be watching this film is for the themes and the kind of language used in the film. Um, so let me just mention that in terms of technical language and the accessibility of the topics that are being discussed here, my children happily watch this film. My youngest is, um, is turning almost five. And we had a conversation, as we always do, after watching the film about the technical side of this, what, what all that language and the lingo, what it all meant. And he easily was able to understand and follow with you know, even the most sort of scientific parts of this film. So what I'm trying to say is it's, it's not very scientific. It's complicated language isn't really used. Um, having said that, I'm not saying that it's dumbed down in any way. It certainly isn't. What I'm trying to say is that this is very accessible to people of all ages when it comes to the discussion of climate change. I must say for a documentary, it is fairly one-sided. This does very much promote the idea that climate change is real and is happening. So if you are a non-believer, if you don't believe that climate change is real, then I'm not sure that this will persuade you or not. Um, it's not completely unbalanced. There are a few climate change opponents interviewed in the film as well to give it some elements of, of balance. But 
What I think this film does really successfully is it gives you plenty of information that then you can then go and build your own knowledge from, the, you know, the fundamentals. The other thing it does, which is really important, is it gives you some tools for change that you can do in your own home. And I'm not just talking about changing light bulbs or turning lights on or off when you're leaving a room um, or using less water. I'm talking about things which are far more globally significant that you can start doing right now. So as a family, if you're prepared to start implementing uh, some change in order to try and sort of slow down the effects of cl climate change, then yes, watch this documentary and it'll give you some tools to help you do that. So overall, we really enjoyed this film. The kids loved it and we have certainly put into place some of those changes. I do think this film is quite accessible for pretty much everyone um, and as I said it's what you get left with most of all is just those discussions of themes um, particularly about us as a human race and how we treat our planet and uh, what we can do about it to make it better. There is a more comprehensive list of the content in Before the Flood on the website which is cinemum.net.